Leap. Leap meeting. Welcome to the Social for Brokers podcast. Today, I have with me Graham Taylor, who is director of Hudson Rose. Now, he's a mortgage advisor that's got an addiction to Lego, is an above average DJ and brings his own unique styles of the industry with his signature hairdo. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll know exactly what I'm on about because it's peeking through the top of his cap and he's showing off his Mohican hair, which is awesome. Need a cut. <laughs> so Graham has, he's built a team of nine staff. And one of these members of staff is actually a branded Hudson Rose taxi that's named Jules. If you haven't seen it, check out the website. It's quite a cool little addition to their Meet the Team page. And he's got some of the sexiest offices I have ever seen. He's got an office in Stroud, an office in Sirencester, and an office in Cheltenham. But enough talking about Graham. It's probably easier for him to talk about. And we're going to go through his message of how not all suits and ties runs deep through everything that he does so graham thank you very much for coming on mate thanks for having us on chris good to see you good to see you now this is actually the first time that we've actually spoken so we had a bit of a chat before is the podcast though? started I, I thought we met years ago no so you were talking before we came on you were at a gary das event you think mm, years ago um yeah it wasn't so, you no it wasn't me it might have been somebody called dan reddish He's another gentleman in the like the digital marketing space, but it wouldn't have been me, unfortunately. So oh, this is the first you. time. <laughs> oh, there we go. I, I thought we'd met. I was like, oh, I'm sure I spoke to him years ago when he was just starting out and it was like over early days. Doesn't matter. Never mind. Yeah. He was nice. I was as an well, estate so agent yeah. before. He was a nice guy. Yeah. So <laughs> Everyone's right. was. was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, thanks Chris. for coming on. I appreciate you are really busy yeah, at the minute, and you, you're getting ready for uh, for holiday as well, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Have a bit of time off. Have a bit of time off. Right. right so before we get into all the interesting sexy questions that we're going to be asking mm. could you give us a bit of a background into who you are how you got into the industry and how you got to where you are today right well i mean who i am and just just me um i've been uh, industry wise i started off uh skipping all the university days and that kind of stuff i entered the industry in 2007 april 07 uh with london and country not knowing one mm. end of a mortgage from another no qualifications in the mortgage industry uh they put me through my cmap did their, I think it was the, the academy they called it at the time. We were the second group to go through that academy. Uh, graduated out of that pretty quickly. Um, so you're now looking at about October 2007. So things were looking oh, wow. good. Yeah, you like, went to life is good. <laughs> Here we go. And then, yeah, then everything went a bit wrong, didn't it? Um, <laughs> so weathered the storm there for a bit. Uh, had a good time, did well, was trained well. You know, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I don't know if they're, they're a good, good outfit from, from that point of view. Uh, ended up Doing, I did my CFA qualifications as typical financial advisors whilst I was there. So I had CMAP and then kind of put myself through CFA because I thought extra string to your bow and all that kind of stuff. Um, went to work, applied for a job in HSBC for their financial planning manager because I thought, well, I'll go into, you know, as everyone did back then, I'll go into you know pensions, investments and all that kind of jazz. Um, got a job as a mortgage advisor because they were like, well, you haven't done the financial planning thing. So let's get you put in the, in the, in the mortgage seat and then if you didn't, you know, we'll bump you up. I sort of said, well, if I'm doing that in six months, I won't really be here because I can't go from whole market broken to time advice because it's not the normal. You know, it, it was difficult, especially HSBC at the time weren't keen on lending money. It'd be mm -hmm. very difficult to go from, from be, having a solution for everyone to telling everyone no, right? Which, so they said, right, we'll put in the mortgage job. That's fine. Got in the mortgage job. Of course, um, RDR, I always get this wrong. Yeah, RDR came, came in uh, and they made all their financial planning managers redundant. So I know that I sat there thinking, well, I've dodged a bullet. It's a far as I've still got a job. Yeah, yeah. But my stepping stones of where I was going to go there um, kind of kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. So uh, after sort of spending, I was only there about eight or nine months um, and, and used to regularly tell people to go to the other lenders across the road because they'd be able to help, you know, things <laughs> like, we can't Man, do it, but it Santander would do it. <laughs> uh, nationwide down the road will do it, which my, my, the, the manager was quite happy with, but um, <laughs> it wasn't going to last no. long, was it? Uh, and then I, I went to uh, apply for a job with Mortgage Advice Bureau, um, for an office in Gloucester, um, met Gareth Herbert, sales director at MAB. Um, he, halfway through the interview, said about this role with Capital Private Finance, which is the high net worth uh, countrywide MAB venture that started in like 2012, I think it was. Um, and I'd already applied for that. I applied via a recruitment consultant and got knocked back saying, oh, no, 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 you haven't got the experience. They want, they want um, you know, sales brokers and like Frank, and it's, you know, oh, okay. Anyway, Gareth said, yeah, well, that's, that, I do believe it. I think you'd be good for it. So he put me in the role <laughs> in the Cotswolds where I stayed for oh, nice. uh, yeah, six years. Um, 
did well there. Was was was, was one of their, one of the end up being one of their top uh, top builders and end up managing a team of the, the sort of south, the country team as it were from Bristol. Oh, okay, team, so went in management. Yeah, but it, it wasn't for me that point. I kept, I was getting itchy feet, and I was thinking, well, what would I do? And then yeah, jump ship the day the week after my um my daughter was born. So I started actually first day of Hudson Rose. I was planning it for kind of a few months beforehand. Yeah, that was the first day. Yeah, and, and that was it. February eighteen. Five years later, still here. A team of nine staff. And he's still <laughs> no, doing it. Still, still having a go. <laughs> what made you? What made you kind of think? Yeah, I'm going to do it on my own now. Did you have the confidence? Because there's a lot of people that will listen to this that might be employed by a mortgage company or, yeah. or in a bank. Yeah. What makes you have that push? It's a confidence. It was always something, and, 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 I, and I don't want to confuse confidence with arrogance because it was it was a, it was a gamble. It was it's, it has to be a coming together of circumstances, right? And and it just so happened that my age, so I'm fit forty now, so I was a thirty five. Kids done that, had a bit of bit of savings behind me, so I looked at it from a financial perspective. Like, right, well, what's yeah. the worst that can happen? The worst thing that happens here is that I go back and get a job, right? I've been a mortgage advisor for by this point for, for 12 years or something, mm-hmm. 10, 12 years. So I've got a track record of being able to, you know, write numbers and do the insurance and you know, build relationships and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm probably a pretty good bet to get a job if I needed to do it. That was mm-hmm. kind of you know the, the thought was I had the money, but so the financial bit was kind of ticked off. Um, and then there's the confidence in your ability to do the job. You think, well, I can do this. So, you know, people know me locally for doing it. So you get the two together. You're like, well, give it a go. Well, so I, I basically had, yeah, I had like 12 months worth of money, you know, living on a shoestring in a, in a bank. And I drew three months out um, when I sort of set up the business. Obviously, I had the, the setup costs, which it can be pretty minimal, actually. And they were pretty minimal uh, when I set up. Um, and then after that three months drawings, I never drew any more of those savings. That was it. Just off and running. We just sort of. Oh, did you? Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So you never actually had good. to touch so, them. No, I spent them now, but <laughs> <didn't want> <laughs> but it was it was that thing. It was like absolutely, it's a confidence thing. So yeah, you know when the time is right because people sometimes say, "Oh, do you wish you'd done it sooner?" And I think the answer is no. I think I don't think I think everything came together to be like, and now we do that, and yeah. it just sort of seems to work. So I, I would say never force it unless it will feel it feels right. And I think. The way that you spoke about that, that you when somebody asked you, should you have done it sooner? Mm. Yes, if I was in that position where I had the savings and yeah. I had the support of the family and I had 12 years experience knowing that if it didn't work out, then I could easily go and get a job because you knew you could. So mm. it's it's all about timing and making sure you have that that backup um, yeah. as you need to. So speaking about that, perfect kind of segue into this into the office situation you say a setting up as a mortgage broker today you actually don't need a lot of money behind you to do it it's having that client bank but the big thing would be if you were setting out you wouldn't get an office straight away you obviously have three high street offices now and you actually Mm. say they are part of your marketing budget aren't they so can you talk me through the stages of getting the first office the second and the third and what benefits you find having your own office Okay. So, I mean, the first was I, I took an office, uh, I took a, a, an office space when I first started. It was a room. It was like a short term thing. But it, was, it was an old mill building. It's been just literally just been converted. So it was quite serendipitous. It was always meant to be, mm-hmm. you know, this was coming to the market. And, it was, and I remember it was £300. It was £300 a month, right? And I included my internet. And I was like, to my wife, I was like, oh, shit, it's 300 quid. <laughs> but it's the same but this is the point right is it doesn't matter because it's, it's real comparatively to where you are so i have the same concerns and worries over my wage bill office costs everything that i have now in my mm. business today as i did when it was just me in a room it's just that the numbers are bigger right and then mm. i chat to guys that are you know got 200 people different sectors but they employ 200 people and their wage bills mental right mm. and i'm like do you have the same like well we don't really worry about it but yes yeah, it's, it's a consideration still there it's, yeah, so the first office was, I was there and I was in a little room. Uh, I was there for two years. And then um, I used to go and get my lunch in, in Nailsworth, just a town just outside Stroud, just where I live. And there was this um, this shop that came, a thing in the window, like, bring, bring this number. Now, this was about February slash end February, early March 2020, right? So good times. Wow, it was that soon? I thought it was way, it would have been way before. No, that. it was 80, it was because I signed the lease for the new shop in May 2020, in the middle of the first, <laughs> first thing lockdown, yeah? which looking back could have gone either ways, but she's a lovely local woman that owns it. I mean, I had to ask her for a tenancy agreement. She was like, ah, I'll be fine. I was like, well, you know, <laughs> and, and she, she let us do what you wanted. So, so the first one, it's because I needed to put people somewhere. So I had me and then there was Jess. And I thought, well, if we're going to move, um, for the little room I had, I was going to take my then accountant's office opposite because he had a slightly bigger little room 
Mm. But then the price was like, well, it's a couple hundred quid more. I can have a shop on the high street, like not the high street, but on the A46. Right? It's just like a billboard. So that was the first one. So then I thought, well, let's let's chuck everything into there. Um, it was black originally because I, I inherited it as a black shop, so I kept it black because I got money to, to paint it. Uh, and then we did the neon sign thing. So do you want to go to the... So, so all yeah, I'd sh- like to talk about the neon sign because before yeah. we jumped on this podcast, we were talking about the offices and how they're laid out. And mm. Graham actually said, our offices are part of our marketing and you have a budget for them, even mm. down to the position of mm. the neon sign. So just, yeah. just to give the listeners a bit of a background, but talk to us about the, the neon sign. So in each of our offices, the, the, what we look for now, which is what, you know, we didn't, it's not, I didn't sit down, I'm not, some kind of professor to be some kind of business expert. I sat down and mastermind this thing. Stuff happens accidentally and you go, oh, that's worked. Let's see if we replicate it, okay? <laughs> and also that's... you'll realise that Graham is very modest because <laughs> no, this is the way it. that he's spoken. <laughs> Obviously built an incredible business that's, I mean, we're going to get into it, but it's the Forest Green Rovers mortgage partner. He's doing something right. So please listen, just bear that in mind whenever he gets modest, all right? <laughs> yeah, well, no, it is. But it's, it's like, you know, I'm not, I don't sit here and say this, this is our master plan. So... Uh, if you imagine, and you can look it on the website, the, 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 the nails with the Stroud office, it's a Victorian office front, right? Your shop front, it's got two big pane windows in it and a door in the centre, right? You can see in. So automatically you've got this really nice sort of, people can look in. So we thought well, we'll decorate it with the stuff that we had in the other office, which we had some nice, like sort of mid-century furniture and this kind of stuff. And we'll make it look good. And, and before it opened, people were saying, well, what is it? It's an art gallery, it's all this kind of stuff. Yes, people. yeah. Um, but then as you drive uh, from the roundabout going to Stroud, obviously you, you drive past the office on the left-hand side, and you can see you can see the wall. So I thought, well, I'll stick a big neon sign there, right? Uh, I'll put on a timer, and it says, your mortgage, our problem. I had it made. It cost me like 800 quid. I'll put it there, and then people will see that as they drive past, right? That was the plan. And they did. <laughs> people started seeing it. And so over time, the office grew, and we, you know, it was very nice inside. It looked different. We had the uh, one of the other windows sticking up with mortgage and insurance advice, but done in almost like a tattoo font, sort of gold and black. And so it really it looked quite smart. Um, fast forward, uh, you know, a bit, bit, bit further, we then took on the office in Sirencester the year later, and we did it again. Uh, and but this time, when we chose the office, we realised that one of the key things about where we are in, in Nailsworth is that people queue because there's a roundabout about thirty feet. To the right if you come out of the shop there's a roundabout right four mm-hmm. four things coming in and we thought right so when we need to look at an office location we need to be near queuing traffic we don't need footfall because you know people don't pop in when we do but, but yeah. it wasn't that the core of what we wanted to do so when we set up siren Sister, we found this place and again it's a little bit too small at the front for a shop but we only need it to be you know we've got two the sign you can see the door behind me that that is where you go through to the back office so we've got the tiny little front mm-hmm. office and back office but again it's got a big window and you turn out this door, you turn right. We're on a one-way street with two traffic and there's traffic lights at the big roundabout at the end. So you think, okay, because people queue and they look mm. at it and they look at it and they look around and go, well, why, what's this blue shop? And why has it got your mortgage? And why is that why are the art on the walls? And you're just kind of like, why is it glowing pink? And then they put the connection together like that. And again, Cheltenham, Cheltenham came up. You go to Cheltenham on the Bath Road. We are uh, almost outside a, a level crossing. The traffic queues to get into Cheltenham coming from the Gloucester side every morning queues to get out every night and again we've got the wall and you've got the sign so the idea is you'll see the neon sign as you're driving in one particular direction and it'll catch mm-hmm. your eye and i think it was summed up best by a client that said to me that he said you know i don't know i've said this before other podcasts, but he um he drove past my office in 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 Nailsworth for about 12 months and didn't need a mortgage it's like didn't need a mortgage, didn't need a mortgage. one day he needed a mortgage so well, where did he, he said who was i going to ring it was like it's going to be you because I passed your office every day. I've that's, seen you. <laughs> that's the marketing. People see it. The amount we get, we go, well, I've seen you. And it looked interesting. And I just wanted to know more about it. And, and they, they look at our reviews and everything else. Which... See, I love that because that is that takes on an analogy that I speak to people about all the time. It's, it's almost like drip feeding your brand into your mm-hmm. client's subconscious. You've done it with an office front. We talk to people about it social media. So mm-hmm. you could post for 12 months. 100 posts and that john smith never interacts with one of them Mm. yet when it comes to his mortgage he's like well every night i've scrolled on social media i've seen hudson rose Mm. they're the ones i'm going to go to because those are the ones that i remember yeah yeah that's it's It's exactly the same as social media it's billboards isn't it it's what we've done for years and years with billboards it's it's shopkeepers it's not you know it's be there be there and be good you know just just do the best you can for each client but you've got to be there and um like I say, it, it, it's come out of 
the first one was I needed someone to put, put people and then realizing actually expanding next town over. Um, mm-hmm. You're fishing into sort of three different ponds as we are now. So we've got kind of, you know, we're not just concentrating our, our, our efforts in, into one bit so we can spread the, spread the risk a little bit. Um, but yeah, be, be there, be seen. And I say a lot of ours comes from, I mean, I'm not the right percentage, but there's a percentage figure flying around because we ask everyone, it's not scientific. Well, how yeah, how, how you've seen us, yeah, yeah. A lot of them is, is, is seen the office and people do pop in from time to time. But the, the beauty is, is because of what we do for a living, we can take the shops and there's a lot of shops on high street. We can take the shops that are, say, a little bit too small to work for a shop, but they're in a nice area. And obviously because of the industry we're in, you know, we only need a couple of desks and a, and a chair. A laptop to, and some internet. Yeah, yeah, to operate. And then we can generate income that can then pay for, for the shop. So it's that kind of model of just taking the stuff that's a bit underserved, that's a little bit pricey for some that we can actually just get in and, and, and have a go at. And you've got to put people somewhere, haven't you? So, <laughs> so Yeah, get a bit of a deal on it as well. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about your, um, your slogan. So what is the slogan that you have that's those pink neon Oh, your mortgage, our problem. So the reason I want to delve into this is just to say to people, try not to overthink things because your mortgage, our problem, you've used a negative word there, problem, haven't you? But this is interesting. It, yeah, yeah. it evokes emotion, I think. Now, yeah. you could have probably taken that low um, motto. I don't know who did it or mm. who came up with it. You could have taken it to 10 people that did marketing and the majority of them would probably turn around and go oh problem you don't want to use a negative word you want something uplifting etc etc but actually stop what i want people to think uh, to listen to on this is stop trying to overthink everything that it Mm. needs to apply to everybody only needs to apply to the kind of customers that you want to attract yeah and i did i never sorry to do i never thought that this it was only it was about 18 months after trading where the BDM of mine said, do you think like, why, why is my mortgage a problem to you? I'm like, what? And I'd never seen it from that angle. Cause I was like, no, 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 no. It's like, you're making your mortgage our problem, right? It's not a problem for you. Give it to us. Do it. Like, it's fine. It's very positive, very relaxed. And he'd seen it the other way. And I'd never, I'd never thought about this back to way, back to front way. The tagline, your mortgage, our problem actually came from our branding agency. Right. Um, okay. I, say branding agency. I mean, there's a, there's a story there in itself in, in as far as the Hudson Rose logo, uh, typeface and that tagline came out because I had a um, I was setting up a business I was like you know, as everyone does you go oh, I need a logo right because what you think I need a logo um, and a guy I went to school with um, Tom someone says to me oh Tom's Tom's in that game like he's he's heading up some firm in London give him a, give him a bell so I rang Tom I was like oh mate yeah I need need this doing it's like yeah I'll have a chat with the art director we'll see if we can do something you know on a Friday afternoon like for the, for the designers just to get their teeth into just a bit of a project really like we've got some downtime so I was like all right cool didn't know really what we're doing he's like yeah, he's just got some some little agency in, in East London mm-hmm. and uh, so he starts doing this I start getting like sort of different you know brand templates like what do you get this what do you get that and I'm going through this process I've never done before I'm like well that's good that's good and when they came back and like the one like was a yellow like the yellow and they like you know they had this like the yellow shows is that it, it's different it, it speaks to young professionals more playful like, yeah, and, yeah. And, all the, and they had all this sort of background about it and they're like you can invert the colors like this but don't go away from these and these are colors i end up with brand guidelines right mm-hmm. whole like pdf this is how you could do it everything else and i was like well, this is pretty good so i bought them a, i said well you know do i need any money he's like no nah, no nah, so, we'll, we'll me. so i bought them a um couple of boxes of donuts right cross town donuts sent them over to the office thank you very much guys all that stuff Happened to then look on the site. I was like, oh, what is this? Where, what is it? It turns out they have got an office in, in, in East London. They've also got an office in New York. They've also got an office in Miami. And they've got one in <laughs> So you and just. Their, their bread and butter is doing like $10 million, $20 million spends for AB InBev and Heineken and running social for Nike and like just this quite niche, <laughs> but very well respected. And my mate's the MD of it. Oh, you know, I think it was, I think it was operations at the time, but I just ended up with this absolute powerhouse which was really incredible it's what you do with it then though just, further on well that's what it is yeah i hope yeah. it's not just a case of out of the box but but things like the your mortgage our problem that did come from them not suits and ties that was our own creation that was my own creation but the uh the not your mortgage our problem i just thought it worked the other one they had was we like mortgages more than you it was like because it was like that riffing on that you know okay you that's never, quite never cool. went with that um but they mocked up differently you know? but that's quite like, what what i like about it is that it's you could have gone down a different route. You could have you could have sent it out to 10 BDMs and that BDM could have gone back and mm. gone, what do you think yeah. about this? But it resonates with you. So what I'm trying to get the message is if it, if it speaks to you and you like it, just run with it because there is going to be somebody out there that says, oh, don't do that. Just go oh, and can, give it a go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't, you can't please, please everybody. Everyone, can no, why no. should you? 
yeah, you want to attract the clients that you like dealing with. And that's yeah. what you can do with your branding. So we've talked about branding. I love that story about the logo. I think that's class. So that logo is worth about 2.5 million. Is that what you're? Oh, I don't know what it is. I have had a conversation since saying, do I, do I have a well, you? Is there like an they're outstanding like, like, invoice? Wait, no, the guy that did it has left. So the guy that left, he's like, oh, the guy that did it, the design has left and he's now doing something completely different. So I wouldn't worry about it. So no, he's totally cool with it. But it has served awesome. as well. It's nice. So let's get into social media and how you present your brand online because yep. you are very personal on social media with photos of the staff, aren't you? Mm. How do you find that that kind of content helps over really stuffy kind of images? I mean, yeah, stuffy images aren't going to help with us because it's not, it's not, it would, it yeah. would jar. So we, 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 we find our difficulty, the, the, the skill, if you will, so the content will jar if we have that kind of sort of very stuffy, very sort of corporate, um, corporate approach to, to any of our posts. So the, the the difficulty for us, or the sort of the skill which we've got to be good at, is is, is getting a, um, it's walking the line between fun but professional, right? Because mm -hmm. you can be fun and engaging and all that kind of stuff and be doing daft videos, but fundamentally what we're doing is moving around a lot, large numbers of money for people, right? Um, so we don't, you won't see as much, we don't do much kind of comedy because it's just not really what, what we're about. You know, we're about arranging mortgages for people, but in a, in a relaxed way. And that's the difficulty. Mm -hmm. It's getting that, that thing right. Um, that fine balance between the two. Um, so yeah, that's what I is like. Comedy. Yeah. It is, it is playful. And there's, mm. for example, you uploaded a photo, I think it was maybe yesterday or something, and it was just a photo of all the staff kind of jumping outside the office. And it was yeah. like, yeah, we've been washed out in August, but we've been in the office, we've been doing. And that, to me, it shows the professional side, but then it shows a bit of personality as well. Yeah. Did you have somebody to come in to do like a photo shoot for all the photos of the team? Yeah, well, we've had a we've had a photographer on a retainer for the last three years. So uh, we you. pay, yeah, we pay um, uh, Johnny at Swivel, uh, who's really good. Check him out. Um, he is, uh, we were his first client, I think, because um, uh, very right. early on, I recognised that if you're going to, you know, we've always done social media, right? It's been what we've done, but we've only really kind of got better at it. Well, you only get better as you do more, don't you? So it's not, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but yeah. You have to keep, you have to keep fresh. You can't just keep using the same stuff. We have to have fresh photos and stuff right mm -hmm. so we pay him a monthly amount we get three photo shoots a year and then we can get him for like ad hoc extras as well and within that he'll do the new team shots he'll do us new offices you know if we go out for a beer or something afterwards he'll come along and get some of that and then we can use those throughout the year so Bad. yeah he's, he's he's a monthly he's a monthly cost in, in so far as that's that. a good and that's something that i don't hear that a lot of people do but i think having a photographer or having a videographer that can mm -hmm. come in every so often just to even just to document your journey of how the business mm -hmm. grows and new members of staff and going for a beer leads me perfectly onto the question of how do you do your marketing do you have somebody in house or do you have an agency in house everything's in house so We've, uh, it was originally me doing it. And then uh, Jess, who's our senior manager, she came along and she was sort of, she sort of was marketing operations, but she sort of changed her job title. She's sort of progressed through the, through the company because she has, has other roles as well. So um, content creation then sort of fell to her on a day-to-day -day basis. And then more latterly, we've employed Cam, who's doing a master's in film at the University of Gloucestershire, but he comes to us three days a week, um, you know, as, as, a, as a staff member, he's not, he's not any apprenticeship or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um and cam because he's a director you know he, he knows how to shoot he's got a, a cinema grade camera uh he can use editing software he can use canva better than better than i can you know you can just do he just he's our so he's kind of become our creative director creative. almost yeah yeah so i will write you know we do our, 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 our i do a quarterly broken note to our introducers about what's going on the market and everything else i'll write it you know on a word document and i give it to cam and he just creates this lovely this magical like, thing that yeah, just yeah, appears yeah. And, yeah. And, and and he's got access to the photos you know the forest green stuff which you know we, we, we're going to utilize him for that um things like you know if you, the power of canva which like i say we're coming in the fgi it can do some pretty amazing things you can use it's a pretty cool yeah process. it's it's, it's incredible it's canva yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah it's one of those we don't stop talking about so with yeah. with somebody that's a creative director, because there might be some mortgage people, mortgage brokers that are listening to this that maybe have a team of say three or four people, and they're sat there deciding I can either hire another admin mm -hmm. or another broker, or take a creative person on. Now taking a creative person on probably wouldn't be the first port of call for a mortgage advisor. Mm. 
what benefits has it been have you had to your company for taking somebody on that's creative? Oh, huge. Because I'm, 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 I know my way around Canva a little bit, right? And I can, I can probably do a jump cut and a edit on one of the, you know, Premiere Pro or something. But it'll, it would, it would take me a while, right? I'd have to remember. Yeah. I'd go, right, what do I do this again? And there'd be trial and error. At the end, it would look at best amateur, right? Mm-hmm. You know, worst, unusable. So here's an example. So we've always done piece to camera videos, to be ads, social ads. Uh, we store them on the YouTube channel. We don't really do much with YouTube sort of need to do but but we, we have these sort of and i've always done piece to camera one shot back so you imagine i used to have uh yeah, i do with this this um this sort of style of camera and i'd have a microphone set up and i'd record it and then i'd put my watermark my, my logo on the top right and i'd go and do the subs with rev and all it all takes time yeah you know, the other day we shot a load of video i literally had to stand up walk across the other side of the room jess was like right we're doing she'd already thought of it she's like we're doing these videos we're gonna do five of them these are the topics yeah, I, I cocked it up a bit, you know, I mean, it was things, oh, I can't start again, but we don't have to start again because Cam just keeps shooting because he can edit, right? So ah, then I, just, right, like, okay. I did it and then I sat down and then Cam's got a footage and then a week later, Cam's like, right, we've got X, Y, and Z here. You know, we, we, it's just it's just done. Right. Or if, if Jess sort of says, because, you know, it's obviously Jess poking me and doing things like, you need to do something like, we should do a, a, a live or a, 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 a stories. We have, a, we have the, the, the work iPhone and mm-hmm. I literally film it. Well, we talk about whatever it is, you know, comes in this stop hand cam the phone and then within an hour we've got an edited story music he's done all the sort of trending music stuff with it and it's gone i mean it's brilliant that's next level isn't it and that's and do you see as as mortgage advisors it's sometimes it's very black and white if i put their monthly wage or well, you mm. pay them 500 pounds a videographer i want to see a double investment on my money I can imagine it's not as easy as that. Is it just to say, well, we pay this much and we get this much out of it? Yeah, I don't, I don't run my business so brutally as that. I do on a sales side, okay. broken numbers and all that. You know, in terms of like not brutal with the brokers, but in terms of what what we when I'm working out you know, costs and juices and, and yeah and, and and all that kind of stuff. That's fair. But but this to me is something that has to be done. This is part if you want to be a serious business and and you've got to be you've got to be in it. You can't, you know, five years ago. You could sit there and and people, you know, before TikTok and all that kind of stuff, you know, you could get away with some pretty ropey stuff because not many people, not as many people were doing it in 2018. Mm-hmm. Stick stuff out there. Now everybody's doing it, right? So how do you stand out? Well, you make it look better, right? Now mm-hmm. I know I'm not saying you have to go out and have a cam straight away, not at all, but but the apps and stuff now, the filters, the things you can do, you can make it look sharper from the off than you could, you know. Five, even five, five years, years ago. ago yeah exactly yeah so i'm not saying you said with a cinema grade camera so no i would always say it's 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 really crucial to us because we're a very visual business and you can see if you look at our instagram yeah. you'll see when cam started <laughs> it's pretty obvious <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go back we're like, yeah. oh, oh, that, that day yeah that day yeah yeah and we were just but like that's... jaws of the floor this guy's brilliant so. the thing is the great thing you're doing is you're creating content to be found mm. whereas some mortgage brokers aren't even at the stage where they're putting out content to get them verified. So the, what I say there is they've heard of you. Mm. They're going to search you on social. So you've got to have high quality content on your social channels. Look, video is a big thing. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. But just having posts that are branded, that are topical, that are professional, ha- you have to have your social channels updated with that type of content now. Mm. Because if somebody searches on you on Instagram and you look unprofessional, you haven't got anything, they're going to move on to the next company. Yeah. It's the first thing, it's the first thing I do when I find a company is look at all the socials. I mean, yeah, Instagram, whatever, just, just get a feel for them. And I, and I sort of going back when you say the, the social, the social channels of Hudson Rose was always from the off meant to be the personality of the business. It wasn't mm-hmm. necessary about communicating messages so much. I mean, we, we do, we have like base rate rises and if you're worried, you know, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff, which you do, but it's not just that it's the, it's the personality. If you want to know about, you know, interest rates and mortgage stuff, give us a call. We'll talk to you about it all day long. But a lot of people, when they're sat in front of the TV with a phone in their hand, they're not really going to want to read a post about, you know, your opinions on the base rate particularly, but they might just like the aesthetic of what they see. It's just about getting that, you know, that connection again. Like this looks different. This looks interesting. The Seeing your happens. face. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, well, you see my face unlucky, but do you know what I mean? But it's that kind of, it's those just those <laughs> connections where that looks different. I don't, I guess it's the whole thing is I don't think mortgage advisors look like that. Why does that one look like that? I'm interested. It piques uh, your yeah. interest. Yeah. yeah. It grabs yeah. your attention. Exactly. Yeah. That. No. 
So we've talked about social media and now we're going to go off on a bit of a tangent where don't use social media. That's essentially what we're talking about here because you Mm. have built your business, not just using social media. You've used loads of different marketing Mm. techniques. And the two that I want to talk about, first one is you were talking that you do canvassing and leaflet Mm -hmm. drops still. Yeah, yeah. And then the second one is you are now the mortgage sponsor of Forest Green Rovers, which are a club that are making moves not just on the football platform, but marketing platform as a whole, yeah. aren't they? So yeah. let's talk Let's talk about Forest Green Rovers first. Let's How talk about FGR. About FGR, um, that's what you refer to as. FGR, how did that come about? Um, well, I, got, I, my, I started going with my son. I live locally to the, to the ground. Uh, I've got a, a mate that works there quite closely. Uh, I like what they do. I don't know what they do on the football pitch at the moment, but that's the other. But I like what they do in terms of their commercials and, and the way they position themselves. You know, they're the world's first vegan football club. They're the 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 most, they're the greenest football club in the world, according to you know UEFA. Oh, well, I never knew that. Yeah, they they things like um, the LED advertising is run off batteries that are solar charged in the day. They have a solar powered lawn mower. They recycle the urine from away fans to then fertilize the pitch. Uh, you can't <laughs> really. It's, it's all vegan up there. There's no milk. There's no you know. I'm not vegan, but I'm. The food, the food is really good. Food is good, yeah. Yeah, and and everything about it is just, it's just, it's doing something different. And you know, the owner, um, you know, clearly that is that is what he does. You know, he, he owns a big energy company and everything else. So he is further mm. the green agenda. He's using football to do it. I've got no problem with that at all. I like the way they're doing something different and they're not afraid to. And that just seems to gel with us. I mean, if you think uh, their stadium's at the top of the hill and one of our shops at the bottom of the hill, right? So it oh, just really? seemed it just seemed right. So yeah, we sort of had to start to have a conversation with their commercial uh, manager. You know what can you do? Well, we've got a bit of money to, to put into it. What can we have done? And and you sort of agree a package, and yeah, uh, then then Fantastic. you get up there. And, as and as straightforward say, you know, as that, guys, just to get a national coverage from a football club is to <laughs> just speak to the commercial director. <laughs> we'll chat with them. Uh, and then we obviously, and the good thing was, we got the um, you know, we, 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 we agreed a press release and date, and then we were able to go and do photos with the chief executive. So there's me holding a football shirt, as they all do, like, you know, that classic. Mm-hmm. As well. But then we gave one of our tea towels. So there's one of him holding one of our tea towels. Because sure. that's the other thing. We give, do you know about the tea? We give tea towels to all our clients. <laughs> really? As like, as yeah. like moving so in you. gifts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because who ever buys tea towels? Who ever buys tea towels? Yeah, you, you never get national trust place with your nan you're not buying tea towels are you so so <laughs> we had um we had some tea towels we, we used to do beeswax wraps because uh, we used to work near the, the, the source, instead of cling films we used to give those away and then we moved oh. to having uh we had a designer do uh house in house face you know the sort of 90 it looks like an ad and it's like yeah. bright pink on this nice sort of organic cotton tea towel and then yeah when you complete we chuck one of those in the post and it hangs around people's kitchens. I mean, I don't know how often you change your tea towels, Chris, but they hang around a long time. So they've got <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. On it. Um, so anyway, there's a picture of me giving the CEO of, of, of uh, Forest Green Rovers, chief executive, one of our tea towels as well. But that candle point, I was saying, our LED advertising that goes all around the ground when it comes on for 30, we have 30 seconds, first half, they say it was designed on candle. Wow. Like, that's I'm incredible. Really, and, and it if, looks brilliant. <laughs> like, we're like, how do we do that? You know, it's, it's people, most people that listen to this will know what Canva is, but Canva is an online design piece of software. And for the pro version, it's £11 a month. Now, Thanks. we have Photoshop and Illustrator and everything, and that's £50 a month for us for the basic package. Now, Canva is 12 quid a month, and you can design high-quality graphics, exactly like Graham said there, that can be used brilliant. in advertisements. So yeah. go and have a look at Canberra if you haven't, guys. But yeah, I think the moral of the story there with that sponsor of Forest Green Rovers is just go and have a conversation because what could happen from that conversation is Forest Green Rovers could be picked up by an international news outlet, couldn't they, for something mm-hmm. that they do, mm-hmm. recycling the urine of the away fans. That would be a mm-hmm. great headline. Imagine mm-hmm. if one of the photos was had Hudson Rose in the background. Well, okay, it, it, they were they played uh, Salford, the big big opening game of the oh, yeah. League Two on Saturday, um, and there was a chance of a goal when our when our ads were up, and I've watched the highlights from the AFL thing, and if you go on, you know the um, oh really so, yeah we see it the first thing it's like Hudson Rose like your mortgage our problem written in big letters behind the goal but it's just it's you know and, it, and it's different Chris it's not that something you can talk about measurement and stuff it's not something where I think we're going to be able to measure an outcome right it's not where mm-hmm. we say oh we've we've spent X we're going to gain Y but as an as a as a sort of um, standing shoulder to shoulder with a brand with values a modern forward thinking that's what it's about and then you've got access to the other partners and the other people that help sponsor it and, and meet them at events so it's more of a profile raising piece 
I think. And it allows us to legitimately use their logo. You know, we're going to go to games throughout the season. We can stick that on the social. We're having our, our sales meeting up there on Thursday. Oh, nice. Um, because, you know, over at the pitch and stuff. It's just a, it just gives another dimension. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're really, really pleased with it. As long as the results Love it. get better. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I control. Just stay on the TV. That's what you just keep yeah. playing Salford. Exactly. Um, so we've talked about the Forest Green Rovers. The other thing I wanted to speak to you about was the canvassing. So mm-hmm. canvassing is one of the oldest marketing ploys in the book, isn't it? Putting stuff through mm. people's letterboxes. Mm. Why do you still do it? Because we've got to do, it's all about how many touch points, you know, seven touch points. You know, it's, you've got to do everything. I mean, I'm not saying we do anything well, but we do everything a bit, right? So we do um, we do piece of camera videos that we stick on YouTube everywhere. We do uh, paid for social. We do um, non, non-paid non socials put out there, you know. Uh, we do sponsoring school fates and charity events. We do FGR. We do leaflet drops, right? We do introducers. So as long as I pick up a little bit from all these different things, right? Well, then that's how it works. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, I sit... You know, you say, well, we're doing things in the right way. But I still like to think, oh, we should be doing so much more. Like if I allocated more budget. But you've got to be careful because it's very easy in marketing to pour your money down a drain and get nothing back. I sort of mm. found out, you know, it's very, things like the, the paid for uh, ads and stuff. If you don't know what you're doing, I would say, you it's know. money so down get, the drain. Yeah, get someone to talk you through it. Just the basics, if you know nothing about it. Don't just go and have a go because they'll be very quick to take your money off you. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and it will disappear very, very quickly. So you've kind of got to do, so it's kind of spreads the risk. So yeah, we had some um, some flyers printed. I think you get like five thousand flyers for one hundred and fifty quid or one hundred thirty quid or something. Really, and, and again, designed in Canada. We can help you. <laughs> yeah, and it's just here we are. We're here. Do you need us? If you haven't seen us, we're here. Let us know. And we picked up. I know for a fact that we we picked up two bits of business from. We've only done it once because we didn't we want to sort of leave, ease off the leads a bit. But we're going to do another drop this summer. Uh, I know we picked up two bits off it because we still told them to mention it when they called. Um, so it more than paid for itself. And then, you know, your logo has gone through 5,000 homes. I mean, it can't Even if it's just chucked in the recycling, they've seen your logo. It's still yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's not chucked. I'm sure it's put on the fridge. Don't tell me that. I can't cry. <laughs> next, to the, next to the tea towel. <laughs> next to the tea towel and the picture of Forest Green Rovers with our thing in the background. Yeah, exactly. Hudson Rose yeah. threw up on my fridge. That's your logo yeah, now. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that awesome. I, I, love the, I love the different touch points and... Although the canvassing that you spoke about, you can't, sometimes you can't get that direct correlation between how many you've dropped, how many appointments you've booked, but that person could see a canvassing, then they've gone driven past your shop, then they've seen a social post, and it's it's those touch points, isn't it? Right, before, we, Sorry, before we get on to the strategy question, mm-hmm. um, we like to make a £10 donation to a charity that is close to yours or your company's hearts. Which charity did you want us to make a donation to? It was to? the... Uh, it's a sort of uh, Alba, I don't know what name is it, Alba Thorne, and it's her re- reverse RET, which is a, a ge- heritage genetic condition, which is sort of lifelong and at least profound disabilities. And, and yeah, reverse RET would be ideal. Thank you very much, mate. Perfect. I will make that no problem at all. Right. So the strategy question, I'm looking forward to this because um, <laughs> Graham has been having sleepless nights. He's told me about the <laughs> answer worrying. to this. <laughs> it's too much pressure. So we are going to pretend that you've moved to the north of Scotland. You've got a laptop and a mobile phone and an internet connection. You've got no money. What would you do to start getting new leads for your mortgage business? I've got no money. I'm in the north of Scotland. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) I get a train south. (laughs) (laughs) I am Scottish. I've been there. It's fine. fine. (laughs) I mean, every video would be video every day of the week. I do the video, post into groups. It was a really difficult thing to do when I first started, and I kind of, Still kind of think, oh, how do I do that? But you have to do it. You've got to do it. Get yourself known. So groups, so as in like local groups to your area. Yeah, yes. It's, it's not for spam, bit spam, get the get the okay people, but but get somewhere where people look at it and go, this is different. And that's the thing. So you, all you've got to do is people to remember. Assuming you're good at your job, right? I mean, assuming you can put a mortgage away with the with the best. Yeah. yeah. Then the only the only thing that you can do that's different to everyone else is either is either package it differently, right? Um, or give a better service. And, and if you strive for both, then hopefully you pick things up. So I would just I'd jump on the video straight away and be like, right, let's let's try and and just do things. videos like very basic videos where or so videos to say this is how much deposit you need for a buy to let mortgage or videos about who you are and your personality. Both, okay. Both things so far, but but predominantly ones that are going to give people that, that you want to. If you've got nothing, right? I'm assuming you've got nothing. The first thing you need to do is show you're competent. 
Mm-hmm. Because if you just start talking about middle lawyer, that's fine. But it's people to know that you're competent. So if you can stand in front of a camera and go, look, if you're thinking of buying a house, you need to think of bang, 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 right? I'm going to do another video next week. Then, and you can do like virtual things. Now you can get a whole group. You can do like virtual presentations with tickets and all that kind of stuff now on Facebook yeah. five years ago. That's what people want first and foremost is, are you competent? Because that's what they're looking for. All our clients at the end of the day just want to, they just want to get their mortgage, green mortgage purchase, and they want to have it in a nice thing. That's the, but the main aim is not to lose sight of is that, you know, get the mortgage done. So I would do that. And then I'd probably put a bit about our, you know, my personality and, and stuff into that as well. So have that mix because I think yeah. we think that social media is this social bullet that if I put up a video about how you can get a mortgage, all these people are going to go flooding in and oh, talking God. to us. Wish it was. <laughs> be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a I'll have 10, I flies, I the <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's having that mix of business content and personality and then delivering on the service and this i heard a great thing actually <clears throat> on a podcast i was listening to for, from alex hormosi mm-hmm. who huge digital marketer and he says what you need to do is find somebody you want to emulate so for example you wanted to say i want to build a business exactly like graham mm-hmm. and say right what steps has he taken write those down And how many years has it taken him to get to that point? Because you started the business in 2018, say, for example. Yeah, February 18, yeah. But with 15 years' experience off the back of Mm. that, Mm. okay, you've got to have that patience to say, if it's taken Graham that many years to do it, it's going to take you the same, if not longer. You've got, you can't lose sight of, yes, Mm. you could follow every single step that Graham's done, but it's still taken time. Yeah. And you've got and you to, to bear that in mind. You know, and, that, and that's true. And, and touch like in terms of the you know the experience, you're right. But also someone once said to me, someone that's uh, quite senior in the industry and holds, you know, has a has a number of advisors, should we say in a couple of firms. And he said to me, he was like, I want to do something like you. How would I do that? And I was like, well, <laughs> missing the point. And I was always said, said to him, like, do it your way. Like, do your it your way, don't, yeah. Don't just because if somebody the one thing the, the feedback I've had from marketing consultants that we have worked with or people that work in marketing and, and maybe they're blowing smoke up or else not is they said that the one thing that Hudson Rose that they see is people that are marketing they, they can tell it hasn't come out of a box they can tell it's authentic right they said it, mm-hmm. you can they can spot the businesses whereby an agency's gone well let's make a approachable colorful mortgage brokerage and they just kind of styled it in a certain way and like the people mm-hmm. that work in those industries go we can spot it a mile off right? yeah. and like that's why we deal with a lot of the sort of creatives and marketing you know, we have a lot of marketing directors because the first thing they do is go I love your marketing and I, you know, I like, I like your shops, like you're different. It's uh, authentic. So I as think clients authentic. you're talking about. Yeah, Sorry, it's clients, yeah. As clients. yeah, yeah, it's clients, yeah, that, that, that come to us and, and you just think that's always, I, I like, that's a, that's a nice thing. And someone says, oh, do you know what? I can see that this is real. This isn't just made up. So I would always say, like, you know, if anyone thinks, just do the thing that you like. This has just come about because it's all the stuff I like smashed into my business, right? That's all it is. It's just my, my person. So, so find your bit and just do that and, and people will come along with it, I'm sure. Be authentic. I think that's the yeah. perfect way to to end the podcast. Graham, it's been an absolute pleasure. How can people Thanks, connect with you if they want to reach out and have a chat? I can read a flyer that comes to their door. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, very good. Oh, very good. Get, yeah, they can get us on uh, on the usual Instagram, Facebook. Um, I am on LinkedIn. But, uh, Instagram, yeah, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You said it. You're there. You're shout, on all the platforms. Shout into the ether. Some, I'll come <laughs> <in>. <laughs> awesome, Graham. Thank thanks, you so man. much for coming on the podcast. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot.